you go. Yeah, that's welcome. There's some sound. Welcome to the Tuesday night weekly main stage music live stream. Main stage. And you know, we thought we would uh, try something fun and different from you guys. You know, we're always groping to find just the perfect topic that will get you guys uh, yeah. fired up. And part of the fun and different is not groping. Hey, it's whatever, right? But I mean, <laughs> but that being said, we thought, what a fun thing this week to try. Auxiliary instruments or ancillary instruments or just different instruments that could uh, complement the instrument that you currently play. But then to add a further, you know, twist, have to be less than a hundred bucks. Mm. Yeah, see that kicked that kicked out the point of the conversation we had earlier this week about uh you know, when you play an instrument like say for instance the bass guitar, there are a few bass guitar players who definitely cover you know, a full solo show on the bass guitar, but you don't always think of the bass as a solo instrument. It's hard to transition that way, and then when you come back to a band setting, you know, you might want to, you might want to adjust some of the things that you're playing so that you fit the band because you're kind of serving a role. But uh, when I think of ancillary instruments, each of these has been featured as a solo instrument in the past. Oh, absolutely. But you might play it differently if you're, uh, in an ensemble versus you know, and, a solo and, situation. Well, see, here's the real thing. I also think about. There's a lot of our um, customers, our fans, watch, review, whatever you guys are. Okay, they're definitely fa rabid fans. So <laughs> rabid. Okay, and um, and of course the issue is is that we're creative. We're always looking for things that is going to um, expand our art, maybe keep our um, interest rolling okay things that will keep us motivated and keep, keeping you know, things spicy in the spicy. music room so so that being said it's like um we all would love you know a lot of you know the hardcore musicians they'll have a guitar they'll have a bass like he mentioned or groping a piano hardcore so, Spicy. Yeah. So far in this, in the first four minutes, it's we've clickbait. Had all <laughs> it's clickbait. So, anyways, that being said, it's like we're constantly um, looking for things that make noise that we can turn into our craft. Okay. So I thought, well, it's real easy if you're like a billionaire just to go. You know what? I'd like a Steinway D just to go in my. Okay, that, that's that's all well and good. But here in reality land, a lot of us go. Well, I'm not really a piano player. I don't know if. You know, I want to go all in on something like that. Okay, if you're wondering what I'm doing, so I'm Sure is I'm, our. I'm wondering what you're doing. Uh, well, Sure uh, sponsors our um, our podcast, and Sure, we love you, and so on and so forth. And my boy Chad Riggler is a phenomenal uh, district sales guy, and so on. And these wonderful mics, if you have just started watching and didn't notice it says sure um they they sponsor our podcast i also am a very loyal sure fan so i'm using the sure se 215 in-ear uh monitors and these are kind of the industry standard for people who you know want to wear in-ears but don't want you to see that they're wearing in-ears so i've only had these not even a year and the cable or something broke which which is a service item and you know what? I actually have one of the cables here, but we were kind of running behind. But it's even then, I'm just like, <sighs> so that being said, if you get some of these, they're phenomenal sounding earbuds, but I have one that's not working because I think the cable's shot. And uh, But you can buy replacement parts for it. That's another reason why you want it sure. It looks so. cool. Like it's on your shirt, though. It's yeah, kind of like you're a pro. Yeah, pro. You're, you're a pro player. It's like, so. I got to hear what's going on in the room. Oh, that's And I want my mix, man. So, <laughs> so that being said, um, okay. So we were just talking about let's you know because it's under under a hundred dollars and, okay. and correct me if I'm wrong that's I guess what people would classify as an impulse price. Oh, I don't know. You don't well you don't have to think too long and hard to get don't even say it to get a um, hundred dollars for something fun for your music room right. So um, so we we marked it at a hundred dollars or less because you didn't have to think uh, too long to get permission or whatnot okay so <laughs> tonight, tonight for those of you that don't know this is x-rated podcast guess, bingo yeah but without if you'll being download -rated, your so. x-rated podcast a bingo card from google you can uh, each time brad says something that's wildly yeah. offensive or uh risque you can uh put yeah. one shot of tequila on the board <laughs> and actually what i'm enjoying tonight is uh, point special beer okay and um <clears throat> And actually, 
This beer was bought uh, for me just a little while ago by my uncle Roger, who um, tragically passed away last week. It's really heartbreaking. Oh, wow, man. And um, so um, I'm having this one for my uncle Roger. We love you. And uh, and honestly, I'll be going to Wisconsin next weekend mm. uh, for a funeral. And so if you're from Wisconsin, I had some friends that said, will you come to my bar and play? And I'm like... It is what I do. So I'm going to be playing at the Cop Shop Pub uh, next Friday, which cop, is like a little... Cop Shop? Yeah, it's, it's actually... Um, so it's like law it, enforcement yeah, thing? I'm, yeah, and other people, you know. But um, but anyways, yeah, so I'm going to be... See, that's what I do is I go on... Uh, they're not really vacations, but you go different places, and then you just bring your guitar along with and, you know, sing for your supper, I guess. But So if you're in Wisconsin and you feel like uh, watching... The, this old fat guy play some music for you. Come on down and whatever. Okay, so now back to what we were talking about. So a lot of us play guitar. Obviously, some of y'all might play piano or bass or whatever. But it's fun to have something extra to, to jam along with. So I, the first thing I thought about was the harmonica. Okay? Now, the harmonica or harp, as some people kind of shorten it, um, has been around a long time. Okay? I would say comfortably the most famous harmonica of all time is the Honer Marine Band, which turned 125 years this year. It's their mm. 125th anniversary. It is, without a doubt, the most influential harmonica ever made. It is the classic 10-hole diatonic harmonica, which simply means that you buy it in a specific key, and then all you have to do is breathe, and it kind of works if you're playing in that key. Okay. Yeah. Now, that's huge because... I know that we, as Americans, all love instant gratification. Well, harmonica is one of those instruments that will give you instant gratification. Let me, I'm just going to explain this to you as well. I'm, we're, we're here to give you some tips and tricks also. So when you buy a harmonica, all right, they have the keys written on them, okay? Mm -hmm. So they're not chromatic where you, you know, and even chromatic you would have a key because it's a do-re-mi scale, okay? Is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. so you get uh, different chromatic harps. Even like the push-button harmonica? Yeah, because you have to start with a specific, you know, key to know the half steps up and down. I don't know why you'd want, um, like, a whole bunch of fancy buttons when you can buy a leather vest where you can load all looks the like keys. Looks like a bandolier. Yeah, like you're man. Riding like with Pancho old, Villa or something like old, that. Yeah. You know, bullet case there. So this one right here, I, I brought all the different styles of the classic Honer lineup uh, to show you that there's different types. The, the one that I'm playing right here is probably my favorite right now, and they call it the Rocket Harp. Okay, the Rocket Harp, all of these modern harmonicas, by the way, are variations of the Marine Band, okay? So kind of like if you see a violin today, it's a Stradivarius copy, because if you can identify it as a violin, that's a copy of a Strad. Okay, I mean, just, hey, there's a little little tidbit of information. Or if you have a six-string guitar tuned to E that's ladder-braced, it's a copy of a... Yeah, of a Martin. Or a Spanish style, much, yeah. like going way back for a little minute or two. So that being said, um, the Rocket is cool for me because I like to play that bluesy style, bluesy rock style of harmonica. And one of the key components of that is being able to bend the notes, mm. okay? And if you don't know what bending the notes means on a harmonica, it's this... You, know, you can hear it kind of bending the pitch. Well, the way you do that is you have to draw a lot of air through the harmonica. Okay. Would you, would you say you have to suck harder than you would generally? No, suck I on wouldn't the say that. That's not something we use the term "draw" because draw, draw yeah. But it, it is a it is a sucking motion, right? I wouldn't know as much as you. It sounds like you're quite you know experienced in that. Um, Anyways, that being said, you the, the Rocket Harp is um, advertised by Honer as their loudest harmonica because it has um, very wide openings here for you to draw the air through and draw, draw the, the air through. through yeah. And honestly, the, the reed plate that it's connected to here is made from a very... Um, smooth and soft plastic it's easier to glide your lips on it's it's mm -hmm. it's great feeling harmonica but you can draw a lot of air through which allows you to manipulate that air um giving you that bending sound and so if you yeah. guys wonder not all harmonicas are easy to 
to bend notes with, okay? The smoother and softer the construction material, the easier it is to draw draw the air yep. across the top. <laughs> Monica. I was gonna, I was gonna kind of rip on it for being neon green, but having lost a number of harmonicas, oh, it no, makes no, no. a huge amount of sense to Absolutely. me. Absolutely, and it's, it's also kind of like, um, there's a lot of products that have an obnoxious color, like a Dewalt drill. Sure. You know, but you can see that bright yellow and black thing, and you know. Or still bright um, orange. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's, a, it's kind of a trademark, and with this particular harp. Now, a couple of the other ones. Um, the Marine Band uh, is fairly unchanged over the last 125 years. Uh, they use pear wood on the inside instead of the plastic that this other one has. McElroy um, and Loudon use pear wood as their bonding on their guitars. Oh. Well, then you can also see, and again, it's easier for you, but you can see that the, the openings there are considerably smaller. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say 40% smaller, but the sound of a Marine Band... It has a softer, you know, tone to it, but it's got a, a nice, you know, little... Now, this one's in the key of G. So, so if you play a G, when you exhale through it, then that's the key that you're playing, okay? Okay. But if you want to do the rocky um, playing along with stuff, you want to use the four chord or the subdominant chord in whatever song you're playing. So... Um, so with the key of G, the four chord would be, um, yeah, you'd be... Uh, four no. C. No, because then if you're playing in C, you'd want to play an F harp. Because the harp you get is the four of whatever key you're playing. So D, G, and A, right? Am I right? <laughs> uh, we'll figure so, it out. Just kick so it you, you play, play the key of D. Okay. If you want to find, you know, they call uh, that, that term is, they use the term cross harp. In other words, you would use the key that's the four chord of whatever song you're playing, and that's the harp you would choose to play with because you bend on the draw because you can draw more air when you're, you know, inhaling. Um, so the Marine Band is, uh, is a, the most popular. It's the oldest one. The uh, blues harp is similar, okay? It's got a little bit grittier tone. Ah, uh, yeah, darker, huh? Yeah, it's got, you know, it's, yeah, darker is a good, a good mm -hmm. word for that. And this one's in That's C, cool. so you could play in G, like you, yeah, just play like a grungy four chord. So the blues harp gives you a little bit darker, a little uh, harsher sound. Yeah, I dig it. This is John Popper of Blues Traveler's favorite harmonica. Oh, this cool. is the Special 20. And um, for people who are looking here, the Special 20 has that same um, plastic, you know, opening part that the Rocket harp had. Okay. Uh. So really the Rocket, I would say, is more of a modified Special 20. Um, it has the larger openings, as you can see here. And when you hear it, you know, it's got a very loud That's tone. That's loud, man. Now, this one is in a low tuning. You can also get uh, harmonicas in different tuning. This is F low. So this would be if you played in the key of C and you wanted a kind of a low... Stuff. 
So you can get harmonicas in all sorts of different um, keys and styles and so on. You just have to find which one you dig. Now this one is called the Golden Melody. This is a very popular harmonica with bluegrass players and so on. It has a very unique shape. It's kind of got soft edges. Now, mm. our county executive, George Thacker, who plays, um, he's, he's endorsed by Honer, and he plays on the Grand Ole Opry, among other places. This is his favorite harmonica, because you can cup it into the palm of your hand and really get that, you know, you really fancy, manipulate. Yeah, that kind of, fancy. This one here. I'm not really a big fan of this one, but I mean, it's just everybody's you know different. This one's got a very narrow openings there, and you can see the reed plate sticks out. Or excuse me, the outside sticks out, so that you have to. Anyways, it's it's odd to me. I don't know, but now there's other types of harmonicas too. All of these harps, by the way, and these are considered professional grade. So this is what you would see. Well, like I mentioned, John Popper, who arguably is the most well-known harp player what's, right now. What's the 59 burst of the harmonica world? There isn't one that uh -huh. I know of. Yeah, because these are things that you use up. Yeah. You know, you don't like... Um, but you can replace the reeds and stuff. You right? can. You can uh, take them apart if you want to. But but see, these brand new are less than 50 bucks. Mm. And so at $50, people just go, ah, do I really want a monkey with that thing? Or do I just want to pitch it out and get a new one? Um, now, there are some pretty costly harps. Those aren't the ones we're talking about tonight, but um, that I just thought I'd bring up. Like, these are um, a pretty cool thing. This is a double reed harmonica, which effectively, for an inexpensive price, can give you a sound of an accordion. It's like a 12-string harmonica. Yeah, a 12-string harmonica. There you go. You know, uh, Tejano band. Yeah, exactly. But that's that's the that's a integral part of the set that you'll be playing in Wisconsin. Uh, right? Perhaps. You know, yeah. this is the Honer version. They call it the Echo Harp. That one was made by Suzuki. It's a Japanese uh, company. Oh, that'd be cool if it had a So these are all items that are kind of one of the easiest things where if you're like, I play guitar, but I I'm... I didn't want to stop playing that one, man. I, <laughs> I was feeling it. Yeah. That's a tune right there. That you can add to for a, an ex inexpensive amount of money, or you can gift somebody who's a, uh, you Soft, know... Soft, smooth edges. <laughs> See, I like it. I like it. For hardcore polka tunes. And by the way, hey, I wanted to let you guys know, and I, I usually am the guy that says this stuff... You are absolutely welcome to comment, and we love reading your comments on the show. So if you have any questions or whatnot, you just let us know. Like we got one guy, Sean, said, y'all are awesome. Sean, you're Sean, awesome. Sean, what are your credentials? I think he is, uh, he you, says, main stage music rocks. See, this guy, I awesome. love him. Sean, do you have money? Would, well, you, he, like to, would you like to give the show money? He's a, he's a great guy, so... <laughs> But anyways, um, on, man. so let's move right along to another cool instrument that is inexpensive and a lot of fun. Okay. And we're going to show you guys a little tip with this. If you play guitar, did you know that you also know how to play the ukulele? I didn't know that. Yep. So the ukulele or ukulele or whatever, I don't want to, you know, say it wrong to all of our, you know, Hawaiian friends. Um, it means in native Hawaiian little fingers yeah. so that's what ukulele means and um it was popularized probably about a hundred years ago like that and um you had a lot of guys going to hawaii because of the military base out there but also there was a very big hawaiian fashion craze if you will back in the 1920s so um that also affected the guitar market because yeah. you had popular uh, slack key uh, instruments and stuff yeah i can't say i was today years old but i was uh not very uh well actually it's not all that long ago i didn't know the hawaiian shirt when i came up the hawaiian shirt was something you bought for ten dollars off at the target oh no right? no Big those bucks. things are like 
hundreds and thousands of dollars for Francis like... Ford Coppola is a huge uh, vintage Hawaiian shirt collector. He pays thousands of dollars for his originals. I haven't it's yet crazy. figured out the metric by which you measure the ten dollar Hawaiian shirt and the thousand dollar Hawaiian shirt. You know, so I used to uh, have a customer who his business was selling these really high end Hawaiian really? shirts, and, and he would take and um, take the fabric of the super high-end ones scan it and then print it on modern rayon and whatnot wow. and make reproductions of them and the reproduction sold for a couple hundred bucks i thought you were going to tell me they were going to take like 64 deluxes and rip this girl cloth off and put hawaiian shirt girl cloth mm, on all deluxe no. items. they could but they chose not to but anyways he sold these shirts actually gifted me a handful of i actually went through hawaiian shirt phase there for a little bit in the late 90s I did, and they were wonderful. I still like Hawaiian shirts. Well, let's so. let's, let's ask the production crew. Did y'all care for Brad's Hawaiian shirt phase? Gibson wasn't alive. Okay. So I wouldn't know. But he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt right now. Is he really? So the force is strong with this one. <laughs> Shouldn't yeah. we bring him on on camera um, to show off the, the I shirt? I don't know. He's, oh. He calls them his party shirts. So we got, I get how much it. does it cost to get Gibson get for 30 seconds? So why not? It is a party shirt, son. Yeah, I mean, man, we're not disagreeing party shirt. now. So Pretty anyway, so ukulele. Okay, so now the cool thing about a ukulele is that when they um, got popular uh, with you know people who were visiting over there, and, and then later uh, GIs and stuff would come mm -hmm. over, and so they'd bring home the little native instrument. Well, the uh, one of the older brands was called Kamaka, and they were made usually from Hawaiian koa wood, which is a special type of wood that only grows in Hawaii. And it's beautiful. It's kind of a caramel color, real flamey, and uh, tone-wise, very similar to maple. Um, so excellent uh, wood for that. Now, since then, though, once the craze took off, companies like Martin and Gibson and countless others started making uh, ukuleles stateside and, of course, out of woods that they were already familiar with making them with, so mahoganies and things like that. Yeah. So this one right here is made by Epiphone, and it's a mahogany wood. It's got some nice little rope binding there. It's real cute. These sell for less than a hundred bucks, okay? And um, the neat thing, okay, so they're small, but they come in different sizes, okay? This is the most common or traditional size, the soprano. So it's tuned um, C, G, E, A, okay? So for you guitar players, imagine your guitar was missing the low E and the low A string, okay? and then you had these last four strings. You could come up still with like a chord. Like if someone said, hey, play a D, you'd go, oh, okay, sure. Here's a D shape, right? right? And here's a G and here's a C. Again, just imagine that the strings are missing, okay? Yeah. This, the chord shapes are the same on a ukulele as they are on a guitar. It's just that the chord itself is different. So the chord shape is the same. Okay. <coughs> For example, the G chord on a guitar, naturally, would be the third fret and so on. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. But on a ukulele, it looks kind of like a D. So that would be a G. Okay. So you just have to do the little um, cryptography there, you know, kind of... But playing a song would be very easy, you know. So you play a, you play a G song. play guitar you can already play a ukulele and it just adds a nice lilt you know to your tone if you're doing recording or playing live um just adds a new layer to what you do I t we were at a camp one time playing you know, camping yeah there's all kind of folks hanging around with guitars and such a dude had a ukulele and that sucker you could hear that thing projecting from just like hundreds of feet away from the campfire i was really blown away with just how much presence and punch you can still get for that top end oh yeah and granted just like with anything it's a lot of projection yeah ukuleles come in all 
grades, okay? So you've got your inexpensive little $40, $50 ones. And uh, we also, Martin still makes ukuleles, and they can be hundreds or thousands of dollars. Colling's playing um, them for a little minute. Oh, yeah, they're, they're awesome. And so, and of course, at Main Stage, we sell the whole gamut. So, um, but it's a great way also to start small people on uh, an instrument. Are the Martin ukes like regular line mm -hmm. instruments? Yeah, absolutely. So like just you can buy them any day of the week. Okay, I mean, well, cool. not nowadays, but we have Martins in stock, you know. Um, but they're, you know, they start around five hundred bucks. So, That's cool. but yeah, but they're they're wonderful. So a ukulele is just a, a the kind of instrument that you could definitely just have add to your thing. And again, instant gratification. You know, you get it right off the bat, and you can already play one. So, okay. So now the next one, this is a, we're getting into the closer to the weird zone. Okay. So I thought, well, what other kind of odd inexpensive sub $100 thing could someone tinker with or add that's going to give them some inspiration, all right? Why didn't you bring two, like, uh, tablespoons to clank together? Well... That's less than $100. It is. It is. Well, it depends on the spoon, I guess, you, yeah. You could tape exactly. a tambourine to your knee. <laughs> so I actually did a, a, a non-scientific field test with this, and I've proved this next item or series of items is a hit with young people because once i showed my son this he was really enjoying playing around with this so awesome this is a korg synthesizer but it is a synthesizer that fits in your palm of your hand and you can play it it uh, i think i feel it was inspired by the stylophone, which was a little synthesizer made back in the 1970s that David Bowie actually used. Um, I mean, it's legit, though. It's like analog, right? Oh, yeah. It's it's a true little analog synthesizer. Now, what you have here is you have this little pad here that looks like little keys, right? But actually, it's a ribbon controller, okay? So, um, and what you have is a little built-in speaker. You have a volume control, auxiliary in, and a headphone or line level output. They make two variations. This one is called the Delay Monotron, and then this one's called the Monotron Duo. Okay, Duo means it has two VCOs in it. Okay, um, they're little oscillators. So here is what you can expect from the Monotron Duo. You guys ready for this? Turn on some Doctor, you know, reruns from the 70s when he had the cool afro and the, the long that, scarf, you know. If that thing doesn't get some comments, I don't know what you're going to, I don't know what little toy you're going to be able to bring on here to get some comments. Now this right here, okay, so this is the Monotron Duo, okay? Now I'm just using my, obviously, How much finger. is that thing, man? Uh, okay. Now the, the other one is really cool, okay? I'm going to just All make right. it a small pop. All right. Okay. Put it on us. Um, here we go. Let me still do that same awesome. Now this one is the Monotron Delay. Heck yeah, it is. Oh Lord, have mercy. <laughs> That's just one. You got two different modes here. Let's try the other one. Yes, please. Oh, 
Anyways, the monotrons are just way too cool, okay? And for an inexpensive amount of money, you've basically got two little bitty analog synthesizers that you can just, you know, have fun with and, and play around with and just any kind of, just add some weird to your life, you know? Now, I've, I, th there was a artist, I forget his name, that actually mounted one of these to his guitar. Mm-hmm. And an electric guitar, and then he was able to go Mew, and make these little kind of weird sounds. Uh, th Are you sure that's not the guy from Muse with the Chaos Pad? Well, there's the Chaos Pad guy, but I saw a different artist that had one of these because these are a lot less expensive. You know, you put this on a uh, piece of Velcro, stick it to your guitar, have an aux out. Yeah, I know I'm always uh, derailing the conversation, but it is odd to me that there's been so many neat, compact, small features. You know, Jerry had a few uh, effects in his guitar. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been some MIDI interfacing in guitars. There's been a chaos pad for kind of ultimate, ultimate variable manipulation in the guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, some other switching synthesizers. Uh, but it's just, I mean, it just doesn't seem to really take off. Well, it's as because a thing. for musicians and artists who. Um, love to pride ourselves on being really original on the cusp of new and whatever, uh, we're pretty conservative. Well, and... well, I mean, really no different than uh, these guys who go on about, man, my next song is about uh, saving the earth and the rainforest, and I'm doing it on my Brazilian rosewood guitar with Adirondack spruce top and nitrocellulose <laughs> lacquer finish. No, uh, I was thinking more like, like how could you ever take a 16-second like delay and ever do anything cooler than Nels Klein. I thought that's what you're talking about. That's like, up to you, right? Like once somebody has really commanded the instrument, like. So okay, so my last thing that I brought with me toy wise to show you guys, with our fun little less sub one hundred dollar show. Did anybody talk about the spacey mess? Um, Not really. Gibson said he feels like he's tripping on Audible LSD. Now that is a that's a very that's cool freaking sweet uh -huh. man. If you could package that up, you could make some money. So, all right. And then he said, "What about a triangle? Shouldn't that be under one hundred dollars?" Yeah, there's a, there's a there's a whole percussion element that's excluded exactly. from the this The reason I yeah I, I left a percussion out of it. You can take two two by fours. It's well under exactly. hundred. Well, it may not be under a hundred dollars anymore, but it used to be under a hundred dollars. You can get two two by fours. Yeah, that was uh, we call those, those redneck claves. Yeah, yeah, you, you know, can bang those um, together. <laughs> <laughs> um, now that being said, find uh, you some old possum skulls and dry them out in the go. road and shake. Well, I mean, the Ewoks, around. the Ewoks took uh, helmets from slain troopers. That was and, smart. That was made, smart. Yeah, and you can't get real like there's a company in Indonesia doing stormtrooper uh, helmets. It doesn't sound like the no. real stormtrooper helmet. They, I think, someone had to have died in it for it to get the tone. That's the, the Ewoks learned. Yeah, you know. the, po the polymer is exactly is okay. So the last blood. piece here is, is something really cool that um, if you come to the store, you may have seen it, but otherwise, you probably haven't seen it. So now, again, I'm just going to preface this by saying yes, this is a real instrument, and I know people play it solo, but a lot of um, a lot of we're talking about guitar players who aren't serious players of this instrument, and that's the keyboard, okay, or the piano. Now, most musicians would love to have a little keyboard to tink out some sort of, you know, bass line or learn a song, melody, or something like that. Um, 
But AKA, keyboards are not inexpensive. You AKA know? the caps lock button if you use Logic X. There you go. Yeah. But again, that involves a two thousand dollar computer. Or um, ten. You're supposed so, to say ten or you're supposed to say X. Okay. I don't know. It's just logic Pro. So let me show you this cool thing. There you go. This is a box. The world's first I don't know if it's the world's Aluminium. First. It folds up. Man, I feel like something high tech's happening here. Uh, there's something going oh, on. Oh, look at that. Oh, uh, it's, I can and, pack keys now. And what we have here, Gracious. ladies and gents. Is that 88? Is a full 88 key. Lord have mercy. You got to have a wide uh, screen lens. Now, here's, see that, here's the best here. thing, you, too, you put about it this. My face if you want to. Oh, yeah. There oh, you go. Wow. Keeps going. Man. Look how long that cylindrical shape is. Okay. I think we're done with this. Uh, now, here's the thing about this. Okay, so it is um, runs on a little bitty lithium ion battery inside. Okay. Okay. It has, um, okay, I'm going to take. Or it has an AC adapter. Or, yeah, you could use an AC adapter. Um, it has a uh, audio out, which I'm going to hook this up to. Oh, and if the cable's too short, you can just fold it closer to the device. There you go. And uh, then you just turn it on, which there's a button right here. Man, there is some business happening. Oh, yeah. And you've yeah. got a keyboard. Now, it has a full general MIDI sound set, which means 128 sounds, starting with piano. Does it have a chord micro delay sound? <laughs> and ending with a gunshot. Now, the reason, so the general MIDI is 128 sounds done in exactly a certain sequence, so you can download MIDI data files, and then all the sounds will Can you sing. drive a, uh, can you drive a sound? Does it have MIDI out? It has USB out, and yes, it's, so this oh, yeah. is a MIDI controller. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can go out to a sound module. Yeah, you can actually, so if, like he was mentioning Logic, so you have uh, a MIDI sound set on there. You plug this in, and this can be your keyboard your controller. controller. So, yeah. you know, for 99 bucks, 88 keys that folds up. And um, can we hear all 88 gunshots? I guess we could. Huh? Oh, that's bird chirping. So you gotta have that sound so when you're playing Blackbird, you know, you can actually do the ending properly, you know? Um. Okay, but anyway, the cool thing is, is that you've got the um, a full set of sounds. So we've got, you know, a full general MIDI uh, keyboard that it would be awesome for people who, let's say, aren't a keyboard player but want to have that extra thing to tap out some fun little tunes for their guitar. So that's why I brought it. Also, it's 99 bucks. Run this into your little looper pedal, put yes. you down some keyboard, some organ Absolutely. patch. See, and his then mind's already acoustic working Acoustic solo time. Boom. Rock and roll. Guys, I hope this was fun for you. Again, this was just trying to show you some neat things that you can get that are cheap, that, uh, again, can spur that creative juice and, and keep you guys rolling. Uh, obviously, we keep all sorts of cool things down there, and we love your input. So if you like what we're doing, make sure you share it. Make sure you follow us, like us on YouTube and Facebook, and tell your friends and blah, 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 blah. But um, we'll see you guys next week. And, um, and hey, another thing I was going to pitch out there, if there's any specific topics that you guys have always wondered about, you know, or thought it would be a fun topic for a show, or if you're a fun person that thinks that you would be a good topic for the show, <laughs> message us. Please. Right? By all because, means. Uh, yeah, we would love to... Uh, we love a cornucopia of uh, opinions and so on. But again, thank you guys so much for coming, and we'll see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel.